YouTube preppers. This is the comms prepper and we're back in the beautiful mountains of West Virginia. I apologize for the gloomy weather today, but we're going to go ahead and make the video anyway. I have one of the comms prepper helpers here today helping with the camera work. Hey preppers. In today's video we're going to announce a new playlist here on the channel to cover the ICOM IC718 HF radio. I've had this channel I think going on about six years and I'm routinely asked in the comment sections or via PM what radio I recommend for emergency preparedness and prepping. And I'll always go back and ask the person what their requirements are. If you're looking for something local, I might recommend a GMRS radio or VHF ham radio license. But if you're looking to monitor shortwave communications from overseas to maintain situational awareness, or you're looking for two-way regional, national, or international communications, then I'll recommend an HF radio like you see here, this ICOM. If you're just starting out in emergency preparedness or amateur radio, putting together all the pieces you see up here on the railing can get quite expensive and the radios themselves can be very expensive. And that's why I recommend this radio as a starter radio or entry level radio because it only costs about 600 bucks. The other items you'll need is a power supply that you see here. A car battery will do but you'll need a way to charge it. To the right of it I have some examples of antenna tuners. I love these tuners. MFJ, these are manual HF antenna tuners. This is the Versa Tuner 2 and the part number is MFJ949E. To the right of that is a really nice automatic antenna tuner put out by LDG. This will do dipole antennas or long wire antennas. And if you're looking for something more portable or tactical, then you definitely want to take a look at Chameleon Antenna's Loop Antenna product line. The QSO you just heard here in West Virginia was copying its station up in New Hampshire on this loop antenna. This thing breaks down and fits into a little molly bag. It's a very portable antenna. It's a really nice antenna and works well. Back to the ICOM IC718. There's a lot of features in this that I really like. I love the layout of the radio. I got my first one back in 1999 or 2000. It's been around for more than 15 years. It has a proven track record. It has some great features and they're easy to use. This is a simple radio to operate. And it's not menu intense, meaning you don't have to drill down into menus like more modern radios. If you need to do something, all those features are available right here from the keypad and you don't have to drill down six or seven different levels. The keypad is a great feature because I can directly enter a frequency if I want to. Let's say you build a list of frequencies that you like to monitor or listen or operate on. Rather than spinning the VFO, looking for it, you can just enter the number here on the keypad and hit enter. But if you want to hunt for stations and spin and grin, then absolutely you got a VFO that you can turn. It's very smooth, it's a nice knob. To the left you have your volume and your squelch, receive increment tuning or shift, a power button, and what I really like about this radio as somebody who wears hearing aids is the speaker is on the front panel. The modern tendency of radios now is to make all this real estate on the front panel available for buttons. So you'll see a lot of radios where they put the speaker up in the top. And I wear hearing aids. I don't like that because I might put this on a shelf or somewhere recessed in a compartment and it kind of muffles the audio. So having this speaker in the front is a really nice touch for this radio. Again this radio is only about 600 bucks so it's easy to get started. You have a shortwave radio if you want to monitor and listen to international broadcast stations. And you can operate regionally, nationally, and internationally with the appropriate amateur radio license. So to give you an idea of what it would cost to get started in ham radio for an HF station, we'll go over some of the pricing here. You can get a power supply anywhere from 
I want to say 90 bucks to $200 for a quality, decent power supply. Or you can use a car battery, whatever your preference is. This radio cost around $600. Again, it's a great starter radio if you're just looking to get started. And it also, I forgot to mention this, doesn't put all your eggs in one basket. I'm not a big fan of multi-mode, multi-band radios that are VHF, UHF, and HF because if the radio fails, I'm off the air. But if I get an HF radio and a separate 2 meter radio and a separate UHF radio, if I have a failure, I still have other options. Over here we have an MFJ manual antenna tuner. This is the MFJ 949E. I think these run for about 150 bucks, and I recommend that anybody who has an HF radio have one of these MFJ manual antenna tuners. This is a great tuner to have. There's no real moving parts in there with the exception of the knob and these inductors up here. So if something breaks, it's easy to fix. And they do a really good job at tuning really bad antennas. If you want a tuner that's automated, LDG Electronics has a great product line for automatic antenna tuners. This is their Z11 Pro 2. This is a great little automatic antenna tuner. It'll tune dipoles and long wire antennas. And then if you're looking at something that's portable and tactical, take a look at Chameleon Antennas P-Loop product line. They have some great stuff. They recently came out with the brand new P-Loop version 2.0 antenna that allows for operations up to 50 watts. So again, we're announcing a new playlist here on the channel on the new ICOM IC718 HF radio. I forgot to mention this is a 100 watt HF radio, but easily adjusted through the front panel to turn that power up and down based on your operational requirements. And I appreciate getting my hands on this, and I'm looking forward to getting into it and sharing it with you guys here on the channel, because this is a great starter radio if you're looking to get into HF or shortwave as a prepper or a ham radio operator. And as always, thank you for watching my videos and subscribing to my channel. This has been the Cons Prepper with one of the Cons Prepper Helpers with another video here from the beautiful mountains of West Virginia. Thanks for watching, guys.